Today's video we have a pair of Admiral 20X12 televisions from the big TV haul I had a few months back. So I'm planning on bringing these to the uh, early television museum convention in about a month from the time of filming. I want to sell these things and I kind of want to have them working to make them worth a little bit more. I don't think I'm going to try to do a full-on restoration on these. Instead I'm going to give them the bare minimum of quality new capacitors and whatever else they need that I can give them to get a decent picture out of both of them. These sets are kind of uh, Banderson TV specials. Admirals like this and uh, Philco Predictas, he has a lot of good videos on how to really meticulously restore sets like these. I could probably do the same, but again, since I'm trying to sell these, I don't want to put in a fortune in parts or an eternity in effort. I actually would keep one of these sets, but for the fact that Bakelite cabinets, getting perfect ones, which is what I want, is kind of difficult. The uh, shiny set right here, it has a big crack that runs the entire length of the side. It's actually multiple cracks. And the dull looking one has a nice chip right here on its face. So these aren't going to be ones that I keep. Why did I buy them like this? Well, I kind of uh, agreed I'd buy a, bu a bunch of sets from a place just looking at some pictures. And when I got there, it was kind of a take as much as you possibly can proposition. And when I got there, they weren't in as good a shape as I expected, but there was one more of these sets than I expected. And I ended up uh, buying both of them for, I think, slightly under my initial offer because uh, both of them have cabinet damage that I didn't notice in the picture. But uh, I've got them. Time to do some stuff with them. I'm going to start off with is the good old Variac treatment. Let's get the Variac down to about 30 volts or so. Well, it thinks it's 41 volts. And let's get it plugged in. Oh, and check out this plug. Isn't this great? <laughs> Yeah, I don't have a lot of these interlock cords, and these are kind of hard to get a hold of replacements for, so we're going to just kind of leave this as it is, and if the next owner wants to install a new plug, they can do that. I'm going to just turn this set all the way on, turn the volume all the way up, turn the brightness all the way up. Ooh, the knob, brass collar is spinning on the body of the knob. That's a new one. I wonder how many of these have that problem. Maybe we'll fix that later on. So we're going to start on this set because the one with the shinier cabinet, the picture tube, I couldn't really properly test it. Um, the tube behaved on the tester like it had a significant short in it somewhere. Um, I've seen this before on my Dumont Manchu and uh, some other sets. I think if I were to retest this set with an isolation transformer on the heaters, it would probably test as a good picture tube, but we're going to find that out right now. Or we're going to find out how wrecked this thing is, and then do a bunch of recapping, and then find out if the picture tube's any good. I'm pretty sure these sets use 10 BP4. Well, model number has a 12 in it, so maybe these are 12 LP4s. These are either 10 BP4s or 12 LP4s. I have one spare of each in my stock. Actually, I have two 10 BP4s and one 12 LP4. So whatever's in here, if I have to replace it, I can. I'm not sure if I want to, but I know that I can. I slowly increase the Variac until we get smoke or raster or signs that we need to uh, do further repair. And this video is coming to you in glorious standard definition NTSC, the native resolution of these television sets, because, well, my last tripod camera, it, uh, it kind of EOL'd itself.
That's good. Ow. The speaker's not even... I just had a look inside and the speaker is not even behind its grill. It's just sitting in there. That's mildly concerning. We'll just pretend like we didn't see that. 69 volts. It's going to be really interesting editing this video. It's going to be really interesting getting this video onto a digital format. Yeah, this is being recorded on uh, Super VHS ET deck. I wonder if I'm even in Super VHS mode. <sighs> I'll figure it out later. Yeah, we're not recording in Super VHS mode. Oh, we can fix that. There we go. Now we're recording in Super VHS mode. Let's see if anybody notices the difference. 69 volts and 44 watts. It's not really changing much. Increase the voltage up some more. Sure seems like normal power consumption for voltage. Let's just crank it up some more. Sounds like the horizontal's trying. Yep, yeah, we've got some... Got some life from the audio system. What are we at for voltage? 89 volts, 87 watts. Seems reasonable. Up. Oh. Hey, hey, we have a we have a line. Turn the brightness down until it's. Focus. So. We have no vertical deflection, but we have uh, nice clean proof that the uh, picture tube is uh, working. Brightness down to the minimum necessary to have a noticeable line. You don't want to let this line be at maximum brightness. You want it to be you want to turn it down until it just almost vanishes when you have uh, no vertical deflection. If you leave this line at maximum brightness, it will sear itself into the phosphor of the picture tube permanently and you'll have a dark line in the future when you get your vertical working that you can never get rid of until you replace the picture tube. And replacement picture tubes don't grow on trees, so uh, yeah. Turn down your bright lines when you get them. That's a really good baseline for this set, so since we've got a good baseline, let's just start dismantling it so we can get inside and uh, do some maintenances. All the maintenances. So, here's what's happening with the knobs. I don't know if you can, yeah, you can see that little edge. Um, you can probably see it on the face a little bit. What I'm going to do is open up this gap like this. Ooze just a pinch of super glue down in there. It's a brand, Tom. Don't use brands. Okay, no brand for you. Instead, we'll just call it cyanocryolate glue. So we're just going to put a little bit of this stuff into there and press it together and I'm going to grab a little bit of goof off napkin okay I'm just gonna wipe the excess glue off with Goof off on a napkin, and that's good enough for that. We'll try a little bit less this time. See if less is more. No, less is less. Less is always less. When it tells you less is more, doesn't understand inequalities, mathematical inequalities. More knobs in a row, ready to tell. That's not how that saying goes. Chassis come out. Looks like four bolts. Okay. 
redneck socket wrench doesn't work. What about real socket wrenches? Also, not the right sizes. That's helpful. Okay. What do I have that will work? Really? Oh, you do work. Okay. In that case. I like how Admiral doesn't include any of the tube functions on the tube chart. Just their ID numbers. One thing you'll notice on these two sets is even though they're the same model and otherwise identical, there are multiple different revisions and production changes over the years on these. And one of them was Masonite back, metal back. Useless production change information of the day. Yeah, that is how that works. Okay. One cool thing I'm going to show you in a moment, once I get the remaining two under chassis bolts out, is that The back on this cabinet, if you remove the two corner fasteners, is not held to the cabinet anymore and will come out with the chassis. Let's move the cabinet on top of this one. That way you can see the front and back at the same time. Now let's... Oh yeah, that speaker is totally not attached. Let's see if I can... Yeah. That was just flopping around inside the cabinet. I don't see why though. It looks like it's all of its securing points are still there. I mean, oh, because the cabinet's cracked, it can separate just enough. That's what's going on. Well, that sucks. Cage, it's less time to roll around. So the tube chart says this is a 10 BP4. Okay, I had a hunch these are too small to be 12s. All right, so let's see what we can do about this with this for this to this. Thing. I wonder how my voice comes across on this camera. I should get my bench tablet running. That's not what it is, it's an AIO. No, it's an IOU. Okay, so I looked up the uh, writer's manual for this set on the Early Television Museum's website, uh, earlytelevision.org. Uh, for monochrome sets like this, uh, go into post war television sets and then into technical information, and then pick your brand and your model, and uh, they probably have the service information, although there's plenty of stuff that they don't have service information for. Um, vertical output tubes is 12AU7. Um, this is an expensive tube, so before I go over budget on this thing, I'm going to uh, give it a quick turn on my tester. pretty sure the vertical issue is going to be cap related because it's always cap related on any television set the caps are the first thing to look at when they haven't changed yet but we're going to check this tube first so that we don't put caps in when it might be expensive the 12 AU7 in this set that acts as vertical output and oscillator tests good so we're going to say that that's very unlikely to be our problem. Let's see where it is on the schematic. Okay, we have grid coupling capacitors, and we have the oscillator itself. Seems relatively straightforward. Okay. Just put this set on its side like that. I'd like to film my service mirror while I'm doing tests on this set so that 
I can show you guys what's going on without moving the camera. Undersides there looks all original. Mixture of uh, Dumont paper capacitors, sprig bumblebees, some white Elmencos, and what are these plastic bodied ones? Sprig little chiefs or something like that? No. Or is it? Eh, I don't even care what the brands are. They're all bad and they all should go. But that's way over budget, so what we're going to do is just replace the ones that we find absolutely need it for this set to work. This card is sketch -tacular. That's not a great place for that, but it's the place that it shall be. Picture tubes there. I like it how they don't tell me what the heater connections are on the... Uh, Sam schematic. Well, I'll just have to infer that visually. That's fine. I'm pretty sure this black wire here is the heater. Because it goes from tube to tube to tube to tube without any components getting in the way. So we're just gonna. Okay, we have enough of a line for me to see and for you to see. Clip the other end of this red. Uh, clip lead onto the uh, heater supply for the tubes. That's uh, 6.3 volts AC. What we're going to do now is we're going to clip it onto the grid, which is pin 7 of the 12 AU7, and it's the output, vertical output. 7 of the UR7. Really? So we got nothing. That's not encouraging. That tells us that the vertical probably has some other problems. Okay, time eater. AC volts. So, what's the plate of the vertical output tube measure voltage wise? Plate is pin 6. We have no plate voltage. That's interesting. Could be wrong, but it looks like it might get its plate voltage off of a boost source on the flyback transformer. Yeah, it looks like it's powered off of boost. There's our boost at. Transformer, the red wire of this transformer goes to this cap right here. Okay, so there's 367 volts on that transformer. Wow, that looks bad. It seems like our vertical output transformer might uh, have an open primary. That's... It's definitely not something you want. I'm going to, I just switched the set off. I'm going to make sure there isn't a huge amount of voltage lingering. Okay, it's charged. Now let's switch over to ohms mode. Oh crap, nobody's home. Okay, that's not what we wanted, but it's what we've got. Wonder if I've got anything that would sub for the vertical output transformer on this set. Just to be double sure, let's, let's desolder the blue lead to the output tube. That. And double check that our multimeter functions. Yep. Well, that sucks. I think that's only the second bad vertical output transformer I've ever encountered. <sighs> I gotta figure out something to replace it with. Might be able to make a hefty audio output transformer work, or a hefty filament transformer. Okay, so digging through my junk box, I found this transformer that uh, I believe is a vertical output transformer harvested out of something. I'm gonna give it a try, mousing it in. You're going to do this quick and dirty, but mostly dirty. Or is it mostly quick? I don't know. Okay. These wires are the secondary. This lytic temporarily unplugged, so I can see where the wires go. Oh, 
Okay, they both go to this terminal strip guy right up there. Okay, that makes sense. So we'll just. The next owner may need to uh, track down the correct vertical output transformer, but if this works, this would be a pretty nice way of just getting this thing done. Hey, that's some raster. It's definitely not right, but it's something. Tells us our uh, our vertical is at the very least trying to work. Wind doesn't do a heck of a lot. What about height? Do you do much? Okay, so yeah, this transformer is definitely not right for the job, but it shows us that the diagnosis was correct. That's good to know. I might somewhere yet have a, uh, a better vertical output transformer for this than whatever the heck it is I just fished up, but uh, I want to see something. I want to know if the signal circuits in this set are doing anything beneficial. Let's see if the audio chain passes anything since the test pattern has no audio accompanied with it. We'll force some audio. Okay. We should have audio on that channel. There's my pencil eraser. I'd like to wipe the tuner contacts a little bit and clean them up. There's one of them. It's getting channel two. It's getting. Why would it not be getting 13? Oh, there. Hey, hey, hey. That's, uh, that's something. There's the test pattern. It's definitely way off. Uh, okay, we're going to adjust the horizontal oscillator and see if we can bring that in horizontally. Okay, there we go. Now we got horizontal hold and we have vertical hold. And yeah. Okay, yeah, so. This set basically functions. We don't have audio for. S oh, yeah. This is a channel 13. Why is it not getting channel 13? That is just frustrating. Okay. We verified that this transformer isn't good enough for the application. So let's try an actual filament transformer, which again isn't the right part, but. A little bit too lazy at this exact moment to dig for a more right part, so we're going to go with this. This thing's stiffer than I like it to be, so we're just gonna 
I'm just gonna clip lead it onto the. Oh, this transformer is gonna cut the mustard. Probably should have warmed it up more gently. Well, so be it. Okay, so this transformer is even less suitable than the other one. Great. I'm glad I only soldered half of its leads in. Heck, solders at that. Okay, time to search for a better transformer. Or I could part out the other set, but that doesn't seem like the nicest thing to do. Okay, so we found an actual vertical output transformer. A Merit, I believe it's an A3038 in my stash. Don't know if this is correct, but we'll find out soon enough. Pretty sure red and blue are our primaries. Yep, color coding is the same as the other transformer, which shouldn't surprise me because color coding is a standardized thing. And yes, don't touch wires as soon after heating up of a soldering iron as I do. Um, I have this thing called leather that's built up on the tip of my fingers from doing silly stuff like what I just did there. Basically what that translates to is that I don't burn my fingers as easily as other people do because I got thick calluses. We will continue our practice of clip the secondaries and solder the primaries. Not for any reason other than it's what we're already doing. You know, one thing that just occurred to me is I should disconnect the old uh, secondary winding from the original transformer because if that transformer happens to have a short in its windings and it shorted before it went open it could mess with the effective behavior of the new transformer so let's give this a try oh that's looking better already if I clip my antenna on properly. So, yeah, that's a uh, test pattern coming through. So this is actually not terrible. It doesn't look great, but it's not terrible. This could actually be just a matter of capacitors being insufficient on this. There aren't a lot of capacitors in this thing. In the first place, it's pin 8 that's the cathode. And that goes to that capacitor there. And that's supposed to be 100 microfarad according to... Okay, well, it should be a low voltage 100 microfarad. Let's do something silly since we're here. Let's see if we can uh, get back to the bottom of the raster with a little uh, clip lead uh, jump ring action. not do much. So it's definitely not the cathode lytic. It's probably my transformer, but do I have a better vertical output transformer for this? Probably not. No way! Ha! No way. So according to Sam's 100-1, a uh, merit a3036 is the correct replacement vertical output transformer for one of these sets. But Sam's 100 1 is for Admiral Chassis 20X1, 20Y1, and 20Z1. Um, and it's not for this specific model. Although this does say it's a 20X1 chassis, so let's compare schematics to. Yeah! That's the right replacement vertical output transformer for this set, so. I'm fighting bad resistors and or bad capacitors right now. Ha! Lucky! I cannot believe this is the right vertical output transformer. I'll show you in just a second what I'm talking about. So, let me try to show you what you're not probably going to believe, but I'm going to show you anyway. This is the Sam's folder. 100-1, yep, set 100 folder 1, 
It covers the 20X1, 20Y1, 20Z1 chassis, which apparently includes the model I've got under the 20X1. And the vertical output transformer is T4 right here. We scroll down through the parts list until we get to transformer sweep circuits. T4, and we cross over to the merit sub, A3036. Zoom in on that. I'll be dipped. Okay, so back to this thing. So since we have the right vertical output transformer, let's uh, get it installed. And then we're going to come back to troubleshooting the vertical once we have the transformer properly installed. Okay, so the old bad uh, vertical output transformer has been removed. I may try to desec desect. I may try to dissect this transformer later and see if I can figure out why it failed. Might even be possible to fix this thing. Starts to dissect it now because the hands have their own mind. It certainly looks like it's connected. It doesn't behave like it is. Uh, I think I found the, what might be the problem. It looks like the uh, the red lead of the uh, primary of the transformer is uh, come desoldered. And then Tom goes and reinstalls the original vertical output transformer when he ends up fixing it. Yeah, that probably might happen. Tin that wire enough that I can get a continuity check on it. Let's clip onto the blue and then. Oh, yeah, it helps if you're in ohms mode when measuring continuity. I'm still not getting any. Meter leads are good. What if I twisted this onto the red a little bit? and then soldered it. Man, just no dice. Did I find anything else if I dug more into this transformer? Maybe not. Yeah, I'm just wasting my life on this, aren't I? It's not like there's any mouse chew on this. If there was a mouse chew, I could point to a smoking gun. I found the ends of the winding where they connect to the coil, and the ends of the winding tell me the winding's not good internally. You know what? This transformer's round file mode. I'm done with it. So, we dealt with that. Let's power this set up again. We're gonna just run it with the transformer properly installed. Okay, so it works about the same with the transformer properly installed. That was to be expected. I'm going to check the uh, vertical stage capacitors. I'm already in here. Might as well. Also, most likely culprits since the tube is reasonably good. Okay, so I need to... I'm going to first go after the grid coupling cap because I can. Wow, they just hooked it onto the wire, mid-wire. And their Admiral did things interestingly, or this was some repairman's old, uh... You know what? If he knows pliers won't get it off. Dykes will! <laughs> okay. This is supposed to be a point one at 400 volts. Let's test the capacitance on it. Uh, we definitely have some poor eye opening, and the capacitance is higher than it should be, so this might be a leaky cap. 
Leaking a little bit at 50 volts. Oh, it's leaking pretty good at 150. Now that's supposed to be a 450 volt cap. It's completely bad at 250. Yeah. Let's change that point one. Since at this point this set has the right vertical output transformer in it, and it looks like it's going to be a runner, and like we're not going to be wasting money trying to make this thing go, let's uh, let's put in some nice new uh, Panasonic capacitors, the ones I put in my good keeper sets. And we'll recap it with these. It could reach far enough, you know. Since we're also looking at, at the same joint, the 2.2 megs on, let's give that a test to 2.6. That's definitely too high. 2.4 should be the tolerance, given it's a silver stripe resistor, so both those things are bad. I have another one. Okay, since we don't have modern 2.2 meg resistors in stock. We only have used and decades old carbon comp parts. Let's just see here. Huh. Well this one measures dead nuts on. It's a little bit big though. Do I have any half watt parts like the original? Let's just mouse in and have look correct. There's this one. This one measures 2.3. That's at the borderline of acceptable, but it'll work. Doesn't really matter how I assemble this. It can be the most pretty thing in the world, but it'll work. Just put this changed to see the result of changing both the resistor and the capacitor. So what you're telling me is that you layered capacitor wiring two layers deep. So I have to... Okay, well we'll test this other capacitor that's on the same terminal while we're in here. Since we have to unwrap it just to get the old capacitor's lead out. There we are. The old point one is completely unhooked and removed from the terminal strip. Okay, so this other cap that we just unhooked, incidentally, is a 0 .5, 0 .05, I should say, 0 .05 600 volt cap. Let's check it for capacitance. Capacitance, once again, is showing essentially ESR. The opening is not wide enough, and it was high in capacitance, so I expect this to be leaky. It's leaking at 25 volts. It's leaking at 150 volts. It's leaking at 250 volts. Yeah, it's got some leakage all the way up. What is that cap? Okay, so that cap essentially is a ground near the height control. That's interesting. Okay, well, we'll replace it too while we're in here. Is it with a... 047 current production capacitor. Wow, I should also check that 
other 2.2 magnets on the terminal strip there since we're touching it too. Might be cramped in parallel with it, but we'll just check it anyways. 3.56 meg. Yeah, that's unacceptable. That cap has to go. Cap, that resistor has to go to 2.3 meg. That's a fatty tolerance. So we're gonna use this old carbon comp resistor that, based on lead length, looks like I might have chopped it out of a set that got scrapped. Tests in better tolerance than the original capacitor, so it's all I need to see to tell me that it's the replacement part to go with. I just want to know if these caps fixed anything. They probably improved something. Yeah, let's just wrap one wire over another wire in such a way that you can't change one component on the terminal without unraveling the whole bundle. That's quality workmanship right there. Okay, let's power it up again. Now that we've replaced two paper capacitors and two resistors, let's see if that uh, does anything beneficial for us. That's actually looking like pretty good vertical deflection right there. We fill all the way to the uh, top of the screen. I bet if I put a round test pattern on that, it would look about right. Also, this chassis is on its side, so the centering's off, but I think, I think I've got the vertical just about right. Um, I'm going to try to force some audio into this real quick to make sure the audio works, and then I'm going to call it a night. We got audio. Okay, so the horizontal is drifting. Ah, they're here. I thought you'd never show. Men that really looked like him. Okay, now hurry. Don't let any of the bosses men see you. Kathy? Okay, so this is pretty much a working TV now. Okay. Let's get this upright and power it back up in the upright mode. Check just centering. That's pretty good. 
Good enough to say it's a demonstrably working set. Someone else can do the full resto on this. I just want it good enough that when I show it to somebody, they can go, oh, it does work. So the audio worked all along, I just didn't have a signal on my transmitter at the time I was running the test pattern. Vertical looks good, centering looks reasonable. I think it'll probably fill the screen and look fine as it is. So I'm going to call this set done, and tomorrow I'll uh, start on the other set after I put this one back together tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow I'll show you guys putting this thing back into its cabinet. And then I'll start on the other set. Will I ever see you again? Well... Okay, so this completes the restoration of the shiny Bakelite Admiral 20X12. This isn't a restoration, who am I kidding? This is a quick resurrection. This set needs to have all of its electrolytic and paper capacitors replaced before it's truly restored. But this is good enough to uh, make it a marketable TV. Round two. We are now going to start on the less shiny of the two Admirals that has a chip on its face, but no, but no cracks or chips on its side, as far as we know. There's a lot of dirt on it. We're going to variac this set up. Turn it on and turn the volume all the way up. Turn the variac on. We're starting at roughly 30 volts AC. Uh, you can tell because the kilowatt needs about 40 to produce a noticeable ooh well this one might be a bit more difficult breaker just tripped on my uh, variac let's reset it I'm gonna look in the back and see if I can see anything out of sorts Yep, it tripped the breaker again. Something's definitely not right. Okay. So these admirals are usually supposed to be very easy sets. These and Philco split chassis are supposed to be two of the uh, nicer beginner sets, but this one is... Uh, both of these sets have had interesting issues. Let's figure out what's the interesting issue on this set. Come on, back off. Back off, I say. There we go. Back off, back off. Let's pull the high voltage rectifier tube out of this set. Huh. This is interesting. Hear that? Um, I'm not sure if you can see. Yeah, you can see. There's bits of filament of this tube rattling around in the bottom. There's a chance that this tube is shorted which is very bad. It's definitely open given the filaments are burnt off of it. I'm going to plug in my tube tester and test this for uh, shits and giggles. And uh, let's turn this set back on with uh, no high voltage rectifier tube in it and see what the uh, power draw is. I guess is that this rectifier was uh, shorting the set out. Well. Ooh, that's really not good. That is really, really not good. So, still drawing excessive current. In fact, I can feel the power cord is warm in this segment where it uh, 
meets up with its uh, interlock end, which is where a lot of flexion occurs and where a lot of resistance tends to build up in these cords when they get older. So that would be where it would warm up if there was a lot of current coming from this set. Let me see if I can capture the wattage and or amperage this is drawing. Uh, is it, at just 40 volts on the variac, it's loading this down so heavily. This is actually resetting and it won't let me switch it into current check mode. Um, well, I'm gonna test the tube anyway since my tester's already pre-configured. I'd like to see if there's, oh yeah, this rectifier tube is testing shorted. Yeah, the pin six plate on the, uh, on, on the 5U4 rattle trap that's in here is testing shorted. So most likely the B plus winding on the power transformer for this set shorted out and uh, is probably beyond help at this point. That's great. So I've got another bad 5U4 G style. I was actually hoping this would be a good tube because I was planning on stealing it and replacing a uh, replacing it with a uh, a non-shouldered 5U4 so that I could put this nice cool looking one into my late 40s RCA projection console, but this uh, doesn't really matter what I put in the set at this point. This power transformer is uh, probably bad. We'll do some deeper investigating because we're here and we can. One thing we might also do is if this cabinet polishes up really well with Gojo, I might just bring this to the convention as an empty cabinet to potentially go with the other set. I have no clue what to do with this now. I think one of the two sets I paid like 40 or 45 bucks for and the other I paid like 20 or 25 bucks for. It might have been 20 each. I'm glad I didn't pay a fortune on these because I I wouldn't be a happy camper if I had at this point. So I want to see what the actual current that's being drawn is. So I'm going to uh, use a non-UL approved extension cord that is very safe because it has the uh, the child locks. It's one of the oldest GE extension cords I've seen with the uh, child lockouts. What's interesting is they put them on two of the outlets but not all three like you would see on a modern cord. So they assume that you're going to automatically always use one outlet on one of these cords when you have a child lock extension cord like that. Um, your, your worthless trivia of the day. Let's see here. So, I'm going to, now that we've successfully degrounded the variac, which doesn't really need to be grounded in this circumstance, uh, let's plug the variac into this and switch to watts mode. I'm curious how much power this sucker's drawing at 30 volts. Now it's drawing 5.7 watts. Really? And now it's not buzzing. That's interesting. Stay on things that are somewhat bizarre. So, now it's not tripping the breaker. Oh, there's the problem. I never reset the breaker. Yeah. Now that the breaker's reset, it's drawing 300 watts at 30 volts. Yeah, something is very, very wrong in there. Um, okay, so I'm clearly forgetful enough to forget to reset the breaker when it trips. So I did it this time, and even though I forgot it a moment ago, we're going to confirm that this power transformer is bad using whatever methods are reasonably at our disposal. First thing I'm going to do is just get this speaker out of here. Next, we'll get the chassis. Oh, before we get the chassis out, it needs to be denobbed. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, this just happened. The uh, decorative brass cap on the knob decided to uh, divorce the bake light. And the Bakelite said, you have a lot of brass leaving me. Uh, 
Oh yeah, and this is the one where one, one of the feet's gone, the other foot is so mashed that it's effectively gone. Um, I'm going to remove these bolts because, honestly, this set has uh, already scratched a wood cabinet on that uh, RCA CTC 47 that's uh, got a date with uh, a, reper a repurposer buyer tomorrow. Yeah, if a collector isn't willing to come pick it up, but a repurposer is, and it's a set with a bad CRT, a chassis that has a dubious reputation for unreliability and uh, is missing things like its back. I don't feel terribly bad about uh, sending a set to to the great beyond. If that if that RCA was something uh, a little bit more special or a cabinet that I liked a little bit better, I might uh, I might think otherwise or try a little bit harder to get it into a TV collector's hands, but that thing needed to go. Hell, if it hadn't worked and no one had wanted to buy it, I might have just chucked it in the garbage. I paid nothing for that RCA, and I paid what it was worth to me, essentially. <laughs> Maybe I'll do some kind of special with these two uh, admirals. Buy the nice one that works for 125 bucks and get the uh, one with the bad power transformer for uh, another 20 to have a spare cabinet. I don't know. One thing I think I might do if this set's truly shot is I think I might just take the back of the HV cage that the interlock cord is uh, securely affixed to and swap it to the back of the HV cage on the other Admiral so that the other Admiral ends up having a cord with a, a less sketchy looking plug. So that seems like a, a thing to do. Some place to Set this turkey. Okay. Huh. So someone replaced the boost lytic on this once upon a time. And it looks like they replaced multiple other... S well, maybe that isn't the boost lytic. But they did definitely replace two different lytics on this can as individual sections. Uh, wow. You can't see nothing, can you? There's like... Oh, yeah. There's a big glob of wax under the power transformer here. Um, and it's in the bottom of the cabinet along the back. <sighs> right in here. Yeah, the power transformer definitely, uh, it had an eruption at some point. Looks like it somehow dripped down onto these caps and along here. That or it spewed. How on earth? How do you get wax to do this? The only way they could, that I can see that is if they were running the set on its side, but this is weird. I can see evidence of repairs on this set. These white Elmencos are replacements. These two are, someone didn't have the right value of caps, so they stuck two in parallel to get the value they needed. Um, they did that with a, looks like a maroon drop in an Elmenko up there. This Elmenko is crudely tacked in. I got an Elmenko and a 40s solar cap. Those are lousy. Those solar bakelite ties, seal tights. Yeah, solar seal tights. Those are just lousy. Bunch of other Elmenkos moused in. Some maroon drops. Someone basically recapped this set in the uh, 50s or 60s, I would say. And when they did, they used a selection of parts, some of which dated back to the 40s. Yeah, this thing's a basket case. Well, I'm already in here. Let's just... Let's just keep this autopsy rolling and see, uh... See what's the matter with it. Let the Sam's show me the power transformer. 
It is a dirt simple power transformer. Power rectifier is on the top of the transformer, so literally there's only probably five wires that should be coming out of this transformer. Um, the two for the uh, power cord, essentially. Two heater wires, one of which is grounded, and uh, one B plus wire. There might also be a ground for the B plus, but I would assume they would tie that together to the heater ground. But what do I know? I'm just an electrical engineer. What do I know? So this wire actually goes to the speaker field coil. That's interesting. And it comes straight out of the transformer, so that's probably our B+. These two guys run over to... Of course, it's full of junk, so I can barely see. One really crowded area on this chassis, and it has to be the one that I actually need to see into to make decisions. These two wires here are the ground for the heater and for the uh, B+, I guess. I'm going to... Uh, power up my soldering iron and I'm going to desolder those two leads and I'm going to try to power up this set one more time you know while I'm waiting for it to warm up I'm going to try to get the horizontal oscillator coil out of my way so I can see into the horizontal easier goes into the HV cage? what is the purpose? tell me your secrets holder up here for the horizontal output it was part of this thing here and the fuse holder disintegrated off of that so that's interesting here I thought the other set was so bad because it had a simple defective vertical output transformer oh it uses this vacuum tube socket as a tie point for the power switch wiring. Okay, that's probably correct. Definitely makes sense at least. Is my finger burner 5000 running? Yep. Running like a champ. For those of you getting bored watching my programming, um, just make it into a drinking game. Take a shot every time I uh, can't figure out where I put one of my tools. That'll get you plastered pretty quick. I now need an interlock cord. Just putting that cage cover back on while the cabinet's on its side is surely going to be a big pain in the butt. Okay. Let's plug it back into the uh, variac. There's now no way that any of the secondary windings on the power transformer can have shorts on them. So let's see what power draw is at 30 volts. 200, 300 watts. Yep. That's bad. Since we've all but confirmed the power transformer is shorted, we're going to do one last thing to make sure it's shorted before we declare this thing a lost cause. I definitely don't have any power transformer with an integral rectifier socket on it. So any replacement power transformer I try to install in this set is at best going to be a terrible jerry-rig. I have very little regard for the power transformer's uh, safety and health at this point, so... That's the AC input winding to it. Let's just fish that out. And now that it's fished out, let's uh, just strip the ends and... Let's uh, grab our... Digital multimeter. Set it to horseshoe mode. Let's have it tell us that our transformer is nay usable anymore. 0 0.6 ohms on the clip leads. That's okay. So the transformer has 0.9 ohms. 
That don't sound right. Some things don't look right. I don't like that, Ma. Don't look right to me. Did you make that? Is there a picture of it in the cookbook? I bet it don't look like that. I'm pretty sure it's dead at this point, but let's do one last little uh, test on this. We're going to just bend up the little stripped portions jam them in the holes on our cheater cord. Let's just turn it on and see what it tells us. 50, 271, 400 watt. Yep. It's shorted. Marvelous. The plate windings are 4 and 6. 17 ohms on uh, from plate to plate on the... That, that is really wrong. So... It's dead, Jim. He's dead, Jim. Let me give you my autopsy on this set, since it's clearly beyond what I can restore and have looking anywhere close to proper. Basically, that Rattletrap 5U4 power rectifier tube that used to be plugged in here. At some point, it burned out. It probably burnt out because one of the electrolytics in the set was probably badly shorted and causing the tube to red plate. The tube probably drew too much emission current. The heaters probably melted apart. The heater strands that were in the bottom of the tube dropped down, and clearly some of them shorted to the plate. When the filament on a 5U4 shorts to the plate, it's like shorting a uh, power rectifier diode, like a 1N4007 or something similar. And at that point, the power transformer here had a highly excessive load on its secondaries and it overheated, spewed a bunch of wax, and then shorted. That's my autopsy of what killed this set. What permanently destroyed it was started with the power rectifier shorting. If the power rectifier hadn't burnt up and shorted, this transformer probably would have been okay even if it had been for two or three minutes feeding a uh, shorted electrolytic capacitor, it probably would have survived. But when when the transformer goes from having a, a very high draw on it to a dead short on it, once it's got the dead short on its secondaries, it's going to start shorting internally. And that's clearly what happened here. Okay, this sets toast. Put some butter and jelly on it, it's toast. I forget if this was the one that had the weird testing picture tube or not. I'm going to retest that right now. Yeah, that's one thing to watch out for when buying sets, if you can, is also check for shorts on power transformers. It's a fairly rare occurrence. I've maybe only seen it once before on a TV and maybe two or three times in radios. But it can happen, and this is proof that it can happen. Let's set up the picture tube. Now, let me... Try to get you a uh, angle's eye view of what I'm doing here. So we just set the filament voltage on the tube. And HK leakage is off the charts. So this is the tube that has the HK short. Great. Well, time for a bag of brighteners. I know I've got one in here that has an isolation mode. Parallel normal, parallel boost. It is in parallel normal. Okay, so this is a uh, picture tube brightener um, that supports a parallel normal, parallel boost. Boost is brightener mode where it increases the heater voltage. Parallel normal does not increase heater voltage at all. It keeps the output voltage on the brightener the same as the input voltage. It just isolates the heater winding from the rest of the circuitry in the set to alleviate problems caused by heater cathode shorts. So we're, it's already configured in this mode, which is what we want, so we'll use that to eliminate the short. Um, you also have a series normal and a series boost for uh, series heater hot chassis TVs. Since we're using this brightener with a tester, the tester's definitely parallel wired heaters. I like it when a socket gives me a satisfying crunch like I'm breaking it. Alright, well, adjust the heater back up to 6.3 volts and 
Hope that it's somewhere in the ballpark. Now that we actually have our isolation transformer isolating, okay, HK leakage is now not a problem because there's no path because the heater has been isolated with that booster. Let's just set G1 voltage to the little green mark here. Really on this BNK 466 CRT tester, the vast majority of tubes, the setup is exactly the same. The only differences you'll get is some tubes have different heater voltages than 6.3. Predicta picture tubes are a very good example of that. And sometimes the G1 voltage will be some voltage other than the green 45 volt line, but almost all tubes are the green 45 volt, including this 10 BP4 in this set. We're only getting one division increase with the cutoff control. We're supposed to get two divisions of increase. That's what we're supposed to set it for. So I'm assuming this thing's going to have almost no emissions. And I am right. Great, so the picture tube and the power transformer in this set are just raw garbage. That makes my day. That was just what I needed. I'm gonna sleep so good tonight knowing this thing's garbage. Let's just increase the heater voltage on this tube to uh, about seven and a half volts. And uh, leave it in test emission mode for a while and see what happens. We're gonna find out if the picture tube in this admiral is any good. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna leave it on Dean Martin roast mode and. The Dean Martin Celebrity Roast, coming to you from the MGM Grand Hotel in the entertainment capital of the world, Las Vegas, Nevada. Ladies and gentlemen, from the beautiful Seatfeld Room, tonight's star-studded roast has brought together some of the world's greatest entertainers. Man of the hour, Frank Sinatra. And, uh, I'll check back on it every... If it doesn't come back to life within the next three hours, I'm going to declare the picture tube in this thing shot, too. This set's just losing value left and right. I think I'm going to have to name this video Tale of Two Admirals. Okay, so it has been around three hours. Right now, this is the emission at 8.4 volts. This picture tube, I'm pretty sure, is shot. Before we completely rule it out as dead, I'm going to quick try touching up the solder connections on the base. And once I've retouched the solder connections on the base, if the emission has not improved, well, I'm declaring this picture tube dead. And at which point I'm going to pull all of the vacuum tubes that I care about off of this chassis. I think I'm also going to pull the vertical output transformer and swap it on to the working set if it happens to be a good vertical output transformer. And I probably won't trouble you with uh, seeing that. I'll polish up the cabinet for this as best as I can and then start working on wrapping this up completely. Okay, I've plucked all of the parts off of the uh, chassis that I care about. I also removed the power transformer since it's dead and it uh, adds about five pounds of uh, girth to a set that's borderline unpleasant to carry. We're going to see how this stuff does on cleaning up the top of the cabinet because it's what I happen to have on hand. It's both a hand cleaner and it uh, doesn't work bad as a furniture polish on wood. Um, nicotine glaze. Django, what can brown break for you? Man, it soaked through into the back side of the... Wow. Now, I can still see a lot of scratches in this cabinet top, which aren't present in the other one, as well as a lot of paint speckles, and some kind of a cup ring that isn't coming off, so... 
not sure if someone would consider this the better cabinet or the worst cabinet. Both cabinets aren't exactly excellent, so... More brown. I think Windex might take the Gojo off. Let's Windex it and see what that does. Wow. You can see the brown, orange, green muck flowing. Look at this. That was just what was on the edge. Wow. I hope I'm not uh, taking the Bakelite resin out of the actual top of the cabinet at this point. That is a distinct possibility. Brown, brown, brown. I am getting my nicotine fix right now. Just touching this. This thing is dull underneath all of that. Yeah. The top layer of Bakelite resin is pretty much gone from the surface of this cabinet. Well, I'm going to uh, Gojo and Windex the sides and then re-Gojo the whole thing so it's slightly shiny despite its terrible condition. And this cabinet will be an extra that uh, will be available as a package deal at the ETF with the uh, other Bakelite cabinet. This video is probably not going to be out before the ETF, so maybe I'll uh, voice over in the fate of these sets while I'm editing the video later. Voice over time here. I did end up bringing the pair of admirals to the early television convention swap meet, and later in the day I ended up uh, finally making a deal with a buyer on them as a... Uh, $80 for the pair, so they went to a new home, and uh, hopefully will be well cared for going forward, and out of my hair. Yep, more brown.
Oh yeah, this thing's dull. Not my little Gojo can't reduce the effect of. So we'll put a lot of Gojo on it. I don't see any significant improvement beyond what a little Gojo will do. sure if this cleaning has actually removed any of the surface plasticize or, or surface bakelite resin or not. With how dull and dirty this set was, it could have all been worn away decades before I even was alive. Okay, so the Gojo makes it somewhat shiny and somewhat visually appealing. That's the best we're going to do with this. I'm going to now unceremoniously throw the chassis back in. You thought I was going to throw it, but it's just slightly too heavy and fake light and high vacuum picture tube. I could break the whole thing in one fell swoop. And the only real benefit would be I wouldn't have to carry it to the ETF meet. Tempting. Very tempting. Can't fix them all, and this set uh, definitely proves that. I mean, if I had a spare Admiral Power Transformer laying around, or I wanted to waste a ton of time hacking in a non correct Power Transformer, I don't feel like doing that. Yeah. One good set and one part set seems about right to me. Yeah, if I did power transformer and I'd be sticking a picture tube into this set and a new picture tubes like a hundred dollar part good picture tube for this set's like a hundred dollar part an NOS uh, 10 BP4 would probably that's brand new and not a remanufactured would probably be worth a lot more than a hundred dollars you're gonna take your screw and you're gonna like it TV chassis you know what? Why am I putting in four chassis bolts? The hack who repaired this TV would have only put back in two bolts normally. They just somehow forgot and put all four back in, so I'm going to complete their job in just a second. I'm going to keep two of the chassis bolts as spares for my other TVs. Yeah, if you won't give me any profit in being a working TV will give me profit and you know, part supply. Well, this TV's wasted. Can't fix them all. So I guess this concludes this uh, tale of two admirals. Amazing that uh, amazing that two sets are known for not having any major problems. The two of them would have bad transformers like that. So that concludes this episode. Uh, if you liked what you saw. Uh, please consider uh, giving the video a like and subscribing to the channel. Uh, thanks for watching. This isn't a restoration. Who am I kidding? This is a quick resurrection.